بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين إبراهيم سيد عبد الرحمن أستاذ وإستشاري أمراض بطنية والكلب مستشفى الملك فهد الجامعة بالخبر جامعة الدمام We are going today to illustrate examination of the kidney and the related physical signs and really you are lucky today because this patient we have is a combined chronic renal failure and post kidney transplantation his uh, renal failure was due to uncontrolled and neglected hypertension for a long time and his transplantation was done 20 years ago unfortunately it was followed by uh, chronic graft rejection and that's why he is back to uh, uh, renal replacement therapy uh, whenever you see a patient or you want to examine a patient with a renal disease in general, uh, of course you have to get an idea and impression about the general look, the mental condition, uh, orientation, time, place, person. Ya Maharib, اليوم أنت عارف إيش اليوم بالضبط؟ يوم إيه الآن؟ الخميس ممتاز. وإحنا بالنهار ولا بالليل؟ so he is clearly oriented to time, place, and person, and he already knows me, so no need to ask him questions like this. Uh, many of those people may become disoriented, uh, and uh, some of them even may uh, pass into deep coma if not treated correctly. Uh, it's very important to introduce yourself to the patient before touching him. So. Let us assume that he doesn't know me, and I don't know him. Muharib, I'm Dr. Ibrahim Saeed, from the hospital of the Malik Fahd Al-Jamai. And I'm going to ask you now. Do you have any doubt? No, I don't have any doubt. Thank you. We comment generally a patient to say that he is lying in a semi-supine position. Uh, of course, we have to put the bed down uh, the head in order to see whether he is dysnic or not. And after commenting on his mental condition and consciousness and alertness, etc., it's up to you. You want to start from head and go to the neck, upper limbs, chest, lower limbs, it's okay. Or you want to start from the hand, comment on the hand, and then go up, and then lower limbs, and then examine the abdomen. So I, uh, both uh, techniques are uh, accepted and uh, the way you feel comfortable with it but I'm going to start here from the head and neck uh, first as you can see uh, the patient uh, looks pale uh, he is uh, having swelling of the uh, eyes and around the eyes uh, notice the notice the uh, tongue. This is not healthy tongue. It is covered by white patches uh, uh, with uh, some hyperemic zones. These are nothing but fungus infection and candida albicans and can be seen in a lot of patients with uh, immune compromised state in general and chronic failure is one of them. And uh, we ask him to look up, Paul Pallor, I think it's clear that the patient is uh, quite pale here. Uh, John, this also, why not? Because there is so-called hepatorenal syndrome and uh, uh, so much of connections between the liver and the kidney. So I ask him to look down, comment on the joints. And then very important to examine the fundus of a patient like that. Examination of the fundus is part of examination of the kidney. Of course, you cannot see what I'm going to see, but you have to trust me when I say that uh, of course, the light should be uh, not very bright, and then you start examining the eye of a patient with chronic failure. Uh, we can see now that he is having uh, uh, hypertensive retinal changes. These hypertensive retinal changes are well known as a flame shape hemorrhage, cotonol exudate, sometimes we get papilledema, arteriovenous uh, nebul, uh, etc. Et uh, and uh, this fundus examination should be always part of uh, uh, renal system examination because 
you know that hypertension is the second leading cause of coronary cranial failure all over the world. Following that, we can smell the patient. While you examine him, come near to him and ask him some questions. Maharib, انت كم عمرك الآن؟ Okay, while he is talking, uh, try to smell. And don't tell him that I'm smelling you now. This is embarrassing, quite embarrassing. So try, because they have a characteristic uremic smell. What is the uremic smell? It is a smell of ammonia. And this characterizes patient with uh, uh, uremia or uremic syndrome in general, like this patient. Uh, so next will be the neck. I want everyone uh, who is observing and watching this video to look carefully at the neck veins. Uh, I, is it clear? Uh, I'm sure I, uh, that uh, uh, you can appreciate how much they are congested, even up to here. All this one is an internal jugular vein. And that internal jugular vein is definitely congested because now uh, approximately about 45 degrees but again careful look at the waves we find that it is not pulsating uh, this means that it is occluded obstructed by something and now we are going together to discover why the neck veins are so congested but not pulsating and not only the intangible vein if you look carefully you find a lot of veins here and in different parts of the upper part of the chest. And the left side, uh, I think it's clear from this camera that it is markedly congested and not uh, pulse style. Of course, if you want to complete examination of the neck in general, so you palpate the arteries, you feel for the lymph nodes, but it is not of great significance uh, for examination of patients with current cranial failure unless uh, uh, a malignant disease complicating by renal failure like patients with lymphoma, etc. So let us move quickly to the next part of this examination. Uh, commenting on the uh, upper limbs is easy, actually. Those people, uh, you look at the nails. You don't expect to get clubbing uh, in renal diseases. Unfortunately, or let us say fortunately enough, there are very few renal disease associated with clubbing. This patient, he doesn't have clubbing. But what is abnormal here? The pallor of the nails. They are quite pale. Uh, because uh, anemia is a feature of chronic disease because of deficiency of erythropoietin. Now, what else? You look at the, the color of the palm. Now compare between my color and uh, by the way, I, uh, I, I am not uh, much of, uh, of high hemoglobin. I have some anemia myself. But you see the color, the difference in color, that is pale, pallo. So the pallor is detected now where? The mucous membrane of conjunctiva, the mucous membrane of the lips, the... Yeah? This one? Uh, shall I repeat what I said before? Yeah, you can see the difference now compared between the color of my hand and the color of the patient. It's quite clear that the patient is pale in comparison to, uh, to me. So where do you detect pallor? Look at the pallor in the palm of the hand, in the nails, in the mucous membrane of the conjunctiva, mucous membrane of the mouth. And uh, this is easily explained by the fact that those people have uh, sometimes severe anemia, it's called anemia of chronic disease as a result of deficiency of erythropoietin, as I said before. What else in the hand? Do like this, محل. So we can افتح صابعك شوي. ورجع يدك الخلف. ورجع الخلف. أيوة كده. أيوة كده. Now look at this patient. He has tremors. It may not be very clear from the front, but we can see it from the side. Okay. Uh, we look first for fine tremors, which are present here, and then you check for the so-called flabbing tremors, and flabbing tremors are coarse tremors, which are seen in a patient with chronic renal failure, can be seen also in patients with chronic liver disease, heart failure, spectral failure, and some other conditions. So in summary, till now, the pallor, 
the smell, the fundus examination, the lips, mucous membrane, the tongue, and the presence of features of immunocompromised state, the high jugular venous pressure, which indicate hypervolemia, the non congested vein, sometimes, not always. This is not the rule, by the way, in patients with chronic failure. The rule is to get congested and pulsatile vein. But in this patient who has congested and non pulsatile vein, you have to suspect a pericardial disease. That is to say, there is marked pericardial effusion compressing the uh, uh, ventricles and uh, sometimes it may end by a so called cardiac tamponade, which may endanger the life of the patient. Or it may be to use uh, some other reason, uh, as I'm going to show you just now. And we said the hand, the pallor, clubbing is not a usual feature, the pallor of the palm, the flabbing tremor. Pulse volume is very important, so you have to feel the pulse because those people are anemic. What do you expect the pulse volume to be? Make a wise guess. This is hyperdynamic circulation. So we are expecting it to be high, high volume. And how to confirm high volume pulse? You remember this? Elevate the hand of the patient or the arm above the level of the heart and wait for some time. You press with the palm of your hand in a place like that, and all what you can feel uh, is uh, the so-called uh, uh, collapsing pulse or water hammer pulse. Collapsing pulse in this patient indicates that the difference between systolic and diastolic blood pressure are white, and this is called white pulse pressure. Uh, what is the normal pulse pressure? Uh, it's up to, let's say, 10. Uh, in people who are having anemia or any other cause of hyperdynamic circulation, you expect the pulse pressure to be high and the collapsing pulse is there, as in this situation. And don't ever, ever forget to measure a blood pressure in any patient who is having renal failure because, as like I said, blood pressure or hypertension could be the cause of the renal failure. Blood pressure may be the uh, 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 sequelae or the result of hypertension, whether it is the cause or the result uh, it's extremely, extremely important to measure the blood pressure and don't forget it because treatment of the blood pressure in a patient like that may stop the progression of kidney disease at certain uh, level and sometimes we may keep the patient away from dialysis just by controlling blood pressure and uh, 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 diabetes if he is diabetic. Now quickly we'll have a look on the chest. Is it important to examine the chest in a patient with renal failure? The answer, of course. Why? No, low head. What abnormalities we may get in the chest in a patient with chronic failure? What do you call this? I call it gynecomastia. Uh, why a patient is having gynecomastia? Gynecomastia has many causes, but in a patient with renal failure, the fact that the glandular tissue is felt is not important the size of the breast, no. The presence of glandular tissue, which is not supposed to be seen in male, of course. So that glandular tissue, we call it gynecomastia. And it should be bilateral, because we are dealing with systemic disease. Why do you get gynecomastia? Toxin accumulation. Which toxin? The famous prolactin. And in fact, some of them may have not only gynecomastia, but they may get milk coming from the nipples. If the level of gynecomastia is very high, I'm talking about male, not female. Female is something uh, uh, different. So, gynecomastia bilateral, which is caused by accumulation of prolactin hormone. Why? Because prolactin is supposed to be excreted by the kidney. While the kidney is failing, prolactin is not going to be excreted, of course, to accumulate in the blood and cause gynecomastia, in addition to other features of hyperprolactinemia. can be treated by certain drugs, like uh, bromocryptine, but the main treatment is the treatment of the renal failure itself. Now, notice in the chest of this patient that there are many dilated uh, veins. I hope it should be clear from here. This blue 
uh, uh, veins are nothing but the, this is not normal as far as you have. And I think it's very clear that uh, even the suprasternal area uh, contains markedly dilated veins. Uh, the rule of a thumb that whenever you get dilated veins, you have to detect the direction of the blood flow. So we'll do it together. There are dilated veins in the chest, as you can see clearly. One of them is very big, extends from the supercell notch uh, down to the chest, and there are multiple dilated veins. When you get dilated vein like this, you have to decide about the direction of blood flow. If it is from below up, from above down. So how to do this? We empty that vein with both uh, index fingers, and then press strongly on the upper one and release the lower. Yes, it fills, but slowly. But notice now the difference when I release the upper finger. What will happen? You see the vein immediately fills, immediately, within moments, not seconds, again. Notice what happens? The meaning of the uh, filling of the vein from above downwards, uh, it means simply that there is obstruction, there is an obstruction of the superior vena cava. Why a patient like this may have obstruction of severe vena cava? The answer uh, could be uh, very easy uh, if you notice the marked scars of the neck here, these points. What are these points? These are entry of the, uh, our central catheter for sake of dialysis. So he was having uh, 